won a game over the course of the year, when we give up the first goal, uh, it shows that we've grown in terms of our patience and, and in terms of under, our understanding of who we are and what we are and how we're going to be successful, that we were able to just stick with it over the course of the, the larger stretch of this match and, and one by one just get our opportunities and get our goals. And I thought that was uh, its maturity by our group uh, in, in an important time of year. you got to know that you can come from behind at this point in the year as you approach the playoffs um, because that character, that confidence that you need as you go into the playoffs is, is critical. Does it, does it help that the goal scored as early as it did? Excuse me? Does it help that the goal scored as early as it did? Well, I mean, if the goal scored early, then it, at least you have a lot of time to try to to get it back. Um, that's for that's for sure. But uh, but it also, if you score a goal early, sometimes it's right. It's characteristic, or it's a shot of sort of you're trying to get something going, and you take that early one, and it can it can disrupt a team. But I thought we did a good job of maintaining sort of what. We thought they were going to do, and what we thought we needed to do to, in order to win the game, you know, and uh, it, it worked out for us. Are you able to articulate how difficult that was for Seba to create that goal, and do you think that he intended to do that as a goal? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's one where you hit the corner and then the ball comes back out to you, which it happens. It's not. It's not. That's not uncommon. But uh, when you're on your your the right side and you're going to hit something with the outside of your right foot and you know whether he intended to cross it or uh, or to put it in the back of the net. I think the intention, at a bare minimum, was to put it over on top of the goalkeeper and try to get guys to attack the goal or attack you know the goalkeeper. He's not the biggest goalkeeper in the league, John Bush, and uh, he's a very good goalkeeper. But to hang one up kind of over his head and uh, and hope for the best, whether that means the back post or if that means also crashing in or somebody crashing in and getting a piece of it, then. Been great. So I think the intention was was uh, a very good one. Um, the result is a great goal for him and everybody. So we might as well give him credit for it. He's done a lot of amazing things over the course of the year. You might as well say he meant it. it would, nobody would probably argue that too much. Greg set a, established uh, an MLS record for combined goals and assists in today's game. You've played in the league. How do you evaluate that achievement um, from a historical perspective? Uh, I mean, I think it's... We've said it from early this year that uh, he's one of, if not the best player to ever play in the league. Um, and so um, I think that reaching that mark is is sort of justification for some of those comments early on that this this is a guy who can uh, he can do a lot of things. you know we when we brought him here, we thought, we knew he was kind of a four. We thought he was he could play a little bit of attacking midfield in this league. And what you see is he's just that. He can create and he can score. Uh, he's obviously tilted a little bit more towards the forward side, but he also creates a lot of opportunities for our team and he creates opportunities for other players, hence the assist number. Um, and to be fair, he probably could have a, a couple more on each side of that, you know, like a lot of guys in that. But um, but he's, uh, he's a special player. Uh, and, you know, it's good to have him on our side. And, um, you know, I think it's also sort of a tribute in a way to the team and the team's supportive of him because you don't, you don't often see guys lead the league in goals and assists on teams that are not very successful. You have to have good supporting cast. You have to have uh, good people around you that, that can help you get those things done. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a perception, but um, it seemed like there was more energy in the stadium late in that game. I think when, when Josie scored, it was the loudest I've heard the stadium for a TFC game in a long time. Did I, I thought uh, I thought it was a great eruption at that point. I actually thought, you know, sometimes I judge the energy in the crowd based off of the Canadian national anthem. When uh, and I know that's about who arrives early and whatnot, but it was uh, um, when the the national anthem is sung loud and and, and to me it gives us the, gives me the chills. And and I think that's a special thing that our our stadium has that you don't get at any other stadium when they turn down the music mm -hmm. and the national anthem is sung by the fans and. Uh, for me, if I was a player and I'm just a coach at this point, it, it gives me it gives me this excitement to play the game, and you know the fans are behind you, and you know we're ready to go. And it's it's interesting because I watch some of their players, and I always watch take a peek at the other team when that happens because I think it's such a special moment in the league. And I could see a couple of their players nodding their head like this is pretty cool, right? And and I think um, that's one of the special things that we have in the stadium. So as the crowd shows up and they, they, they sing the national anthem right away. That's sort of my gauge of what the energy level might be in the crowd. And then it's up to us to, to provide energy and excitement and things like that over the course of the game. And the fact that it was sort of wide open with five goals, um, and especially that third one, I think it was the, the telling goal that, that we were going to go on and get something out of this was, um, 
probably brought a lot of people to their feet at that moment. But it was uh, it was it was definitely, as you said, one of the one of the the bright moments in terms of just energy just coming out of the stadium. Greg, you have pretty much everyone healthy back now. Yeah. And it's correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was the second game in a row where it was the exact same starting eleven. Is this sort of the preferred eleven going forward? Is this sort of the formation that you see going through to the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think we're really close. I think, um, you know, in terms of formation, I'm not looking to shift anything crazy. We want to settle into something and we want to move forward. And then it's about nuances and how we want to move in that system and how we want to defend and, and really perfecting it. And, and it's about relationships on the field, you know. Um, but as we get healthy and guys get fit, uh, I think there's always um, – as much as we also want to have consistency, I think there's good matchups that you can find over the course of a game with one opponent to the next, right? And and that might be be one guy over another guy, but by and large, just just we're starting to get to that that group that we want to we want to see out there as consistent as possible. Again, you got a couple guys here or there that that might make better sense in a matchup, whether it's a home away, or a certain opponent, or things like that 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 make a lot of sense. What were your thoughts on Gilberto's performance today? I mean, you coached him a bit at the end of last yeah. season. First, I don't know, last brace here at BMO Field. Um, I thought he was good. I thought he was a handful. Uh, you know, when when the spaces got open, he was he's active, he's athletic, he runs, um, he creates things. I think um, we opened up some spaces for him that maybe we didn't need to, uh, especially on the the second goal. Um, but I, I mean, he's he's a good ball striker. He's he's a very active player. He runs. He's physically gifted uh, in terms of his physical presence. So, um, you know, I'm happy for him. I'm glad we won the game, but uh, it's good for him. Um, you know, this was one of his homes. We didn't necessarily um, get rid of him because we didn't like him. And so we, we've seen those attributes in him, and he's capable, fully capable. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I wish he wouldn't have done it here today, but he did, uh, and we got the result. But he's, he's fully capable of scoring goals in this league, and, and I've, always, I've always thought that of him, even last year. Eight, eight seasons without playoffs, you finally get here another Blue Jays are stealing your thunder. How does it feel? <laughs> Those damn Blue Jays. No. Uh, listen, I, I got I to gotta be honest. I, uh, I grew up playing soccer, baseball till high school, and uh, I got to be honest. I like watching the Blue Jays too, but um, and they've got an exciting team. I think we have an exciting team, and, um, and hopefully there's uh, room for both of us um, because I think – I think we can build off of each other and make a really, really exciting time in October, November for the city of Toronto. And you know, hopefully we have some fans that cross over and really want to get excited about both of our, our franchises and both of our teams. And um, we can continue to make it exciting. But, uh, I, I mean, they've done a great job. I can't, I can't deny it. We, now we've got to keep pace. That's the key. Greg, uh, I was wondering the question of your substitution in the course of the season. I think your substitution today was well, thank you. I don't know if you're totally comfortable now with the personnel, whether you're giving a day early or you're giving a day. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, when we have the full complement of guys, we know kind of what each guy adds to the team one way or another. We know we have options. I mean, um, for good or f for, for better or for worse over the course of the seasons, we've had a couple different systems. We've looked at a couple different lineups, you know, sometimes with a new group and, a, and new faces that you're bringing together. You over the course of the season, you get some. You get. We've had the opportunity to get a lot of different looks, but now down the stretch, we we kind of know, um, you know, what our best looks are. Um, fully healthy, what our best guys are. Whether we want to try to attack and get a game, or whether we want to secure and lock down a game. And the course of a season allows you to to try some of those things and to do some of those things. And and you know now we've got a good sense of of our group and and not just. You know, at the end of this game, we went to a 5-4-1, so to speak, and I thought the guys did a, a tremendous job of sort of shifting around and closing things off, and we did a good job of getting out of the defensive shape and keeping possession. There was a couple times where maybe we didn't need to go to goal. We probably could have killed off the game a little bit uh, cleaner, but I thought we did a pretty good job. You know, there's been a few games this year where we played with, with sort of this five uh, in the back, and I think those moments help you to win these types of games, you know, and so... Uh, that's what a season is about, is learning about your team and about each of your players. And, and now that we're, again, like you mentioned, getting a full complement of guys, we have options. Uh, and today we were, we were able to see some of those options, and it, and it helped us get the result.